All right, ready to dig in. Today, we're talking about something pretty big, something with a past, some would even say controversial, but potentially a whole lot of opportunity. And a whole lot of green, too, but not just in the way you might think. Exactly. We're talking hemp. Specifically, we're taking a deep dive into an article from Farm and Dairy about Appalachia and this plant's potential to, well, maybe even revitalize the whole region. They really went all in on this, even teamed up with Reimagine Appalachia for a webinar, which, let me tell you, was fascinating. Yeah, Reimagine Appalachia is doing some really cool work looking at the economic future of that region. And hemp keeps coming up. It's hard to ignore, honestly. Okay, so hemp. Let's just get this out of the way. Mm. Most people hear that word <laughs> and they think, well, you know. Yeah, I got to address the elephant in the room, right? Right. So before we go any further, can we just clear the air? What exactly is hemp? How is it different from, you know? It's all about the chemistry, really. Hemp and marijuana, they're both cannabis sativa, same species. But here's the key difference. THC. That's the psychoactive compound, the stuff that gets you high. Industrial hemp, what we're talking about, has basically none, less than 0.3% to be exact. So no Cheech and Chung shenanigans after a hemp protein bar. Definitely not. This isn't about getting high. It's about the plant itself. And let me tell you, this plant can do it all. Textiles, bioplastics, building materials, even animal feed. It's crazy. I was reading that Kentucky used to be the place for hemp back in the 1800s. Like a hemp powerhouse. Did not know that. Oh, yeah. Huge hemp fiber producer back in the day. Yeah. And it wasn't just Kentucky. Pennsylvania, too. Long history there, going all the way back to the 1600s, actually. Wow. Okay, so hemp, this huge part of Appalachia's past, then basically disappears. And now it's making a comeback. Out of sight, out of mind for decades. Why do we stop growing hemp in the first place? Well, it's a bit of a sad story, really. All comes down to perception. You mean because of marijuana? Bingo. Guilt by association. Even though hemp and marijuana are different, you know, chemically speaking, hemp got caught in the crossfire, especially during the war on drugs. Then the 1937 Marijuana Tax Act, that was basically the nail in the coffin, made it almost impossible to grow hemp legally. So all that history, all those years of hemp production, just gone. Pretty much. But there's good news. Things are changing. People are starting to see hemp in a new light, no pun intended. You mean like CBD oil? <laughs> That's definitely having a moment. CBD is huge for sure, but it goes way beyond that. We're talking about a plant that can help us create a more sustainable future. I mean, think about it. Hemp needs less water than cotton. It doesn't need all those pesticides. That's a big deal these days. Right. Sustainability is becoming so important. Okay, so we've got this plant. Good for the environment. Crazy versatile, historic ties to Appalachia. But why is Appalachia the place for hemp to make its big comeback? A lot of reasons, actually. First off, the climate's perfect. Hemp loves those warm days, cool nights, you know, like Appalachia summers. Yeah, those summers are something else. Yeah. But perfect for hemp, apparently. Totally. Plus, think about all the infrastructure that's already there from the coal industry. Old plants, manufacturing sites, often located right on rivers near rail lines. Prime real estate for hemp processing. So we're talking, like, turning coal country into hemp country. Exactly. The farm and dairy article even mentioned some of the equipment used for tobacco processing could easily be adapted for hemp. Wow. Talk about a second life for those facilities. Mm. And I remember something in the article about a twofer benefit. What was that all about? Oh, yeah. Natalia Rudiak from Reimagine Appalachia. She was saying this isn't just about growing hemp. It's about building a whole new industry, growing it and processing it in the same region. That's jobs in agriculture, manufacturing, research everything. Wow. That's a whole lot of potential. But I got to ask, what about the challenges? Because it can't be all smooth sailing for hemp farmers, right? There's got to be a catch, right? I mean, it sounds almost too good to be true. Well, there are definitely some hurdles, some pretty big ones, actually. And a lot of it comes down to, you guessed it, regulations. Oh, boy. Here we go. What are we talking about? What kind of regulations? <laughs> so right now, industrial hemp, the stuff that's grown for fiber and grain, it's treated basically the same as CBD hemp in the eyes of the law. Wait, even though it has almost no THC, we talked about that. I know, right? But the regulations haven't quite caught up with the science. So these farmers, they're growing industrial hemp, but they have to go through all these expensive, time-consuming tests to prove it doesn't have high levels of THC. Which seems a little ridiculous, doesn't it, when they're not even using it for that? Exactly. Erica Stark from the National Hemp Association, she put it perfectly. She said in the article that it's just a whole lot of unnecessary testing, not to mention the cost. Yeah, those tests aren't cheap, are they? 
Not at all. And it's not just the tests themselves. The article also quotes Lori Daytner. She's with the Pennsylvania Hemp Industry Council. And she talked about all the paperwork involved. Permits, reports, more reports. It's a lot for farmers to deal with, especially when they're just trying to get a crop to market. It's like they're trying to climb a mountain, but the mountain keeps getting higher. So what can be done? Is there any light at the end of this regulatory tunnel? Actually, there might be. The Farm Bill, that's the big one. Okay, the Farm Bill. Remind me what that is again. So the Farm Bill, it's this huge piece of legislation that covers, well, pretty much everything agriculture in the U.S. And it's up for renewal this year. Okay, and? And the current draft actually has language that would redefine industrial hemp and separate it from cannabinoid hemp in the regulations. Wait, seriously? That would be huge. That would mean that would mean easier regulations for industrial hemp farmers, less testing, less paperwork, more potential for investment in the industry. It could be a game changer. But this is just a draft, right? It's not a done deal. Unfortunately not. The Farm and Dairy article made it clear that this is still up in the air. Congress could still change things, so we'll have to wait and see. Another cliffhanger. Yeah. But that's how these things work, I guess. Mm. But still, it makes you think. The future of a whole industry, a whole region even, hanging on a few lines in a bill. It's true. And it's not just Appalachia either. If industrial hemp takes off, if these regulations change, it could have a ripple effect across the entire country. Imagine hemp products everywhere you look, all made in the USA. Clothing, construction materials, food, you name it. It could be the start of something really big. What do you think about the future of hemp? Could this be the start of a new green revolution? Let us know your thoughts, and until next time...